Hey guys, good evening. It is the Earth Master here on the live stream with a uh, quick update video on uh, this beautiful Thursday evening. October 28th is the date, 2021, 6.06 p.m. California time. And the latest quake out there on the Earthquake 3D globe here is a 2.7 in the Puerto Rico area. A little bit of movement uh, taking place around Alaska, Fiji, and the western part of the Pacific Ring of Fire around the Indonesia area is about it as far as earthquake activity goes um, at the moment. The big picture right now, kind of the activity that took place on the sun a little bit earlier today where we had a uh, an X-class flare, an X1 to be exact. Uh, pretty, pretty strong solar flare looking at potential a uh, G3 class storm on October 30th. I've been seeing some posts out there around the social media about potentially seeing this activity uh, down into the middle latitudes, maybe even down uh, into like the Northern California area, which would be kind of cool, but uh, we would just barely be able to see it on the horizon. I'm not for sure how uh, true that's gonna be. We'll have to see as this comes in, but right now they are issuing a G3 class storm, which is pretty strong on October 30th. A little bit more detailed forecast on that shows the hours UTC time between 6 and 12 on October 30th. So depending on what your time uh, time zone is out there, you would have to match that up with the UTC time. But uh, yeah, that's pretty crazy. I, I'm going to be uh, alert and awake to see if we can see that down here in the Northern California. Uh, like I say, I got a clear shot of the Northern sky for quite a distance. We'll see what happens, right? G3 class storm. A lot of folks wondering what a G3 class storm is. Well, it's a strong storm, geomagnetic storm, uh, potential uh, HF radio blackouts. We had that earlier when the uh, X1 flare popped off. And in fact, uh, it was loss of radio contact on the sunlit side of the earth centered right over the South America region uh, that was pretty uh, uh, defined directly over that area earlier. Uh, and you can see here on this map, we get uh, about 175 per cycle, according to this graph, 140 days per cycle, uh, solar cycle that is. The severe storms, uh, the severe um, flares that is, X10, X20, the big ones. These are the big ones that can cause some issues with the satellites and whatnot, navigation, marine systems, all that stuff. Um, it looks like maybe one per cycle is what uh, these guys are stating. But uh, there you go. The R3 so uh, songs, the R3 storms are strong. They're nonetheless, they're pretty strong. And that's what they are predicting come October 30th um, with this CME that popped off from the X1 earlier today. Now looking like it's directly Earth related or Earth um, directed directed directly at the earth um, and it's a uh, it's a pretty dandy one you can see here on the sun or the earth side sun surface here the culprit was the 2887 a massive sunspot and that thing is capable of producing some more strong flares uh, in the future this thing is directly facing us as well just a couple other flares behind it that will be facing towards earth but this one right now has us within the bullseye, so to speak, of the sun scope. Looking at the forecast, far as the um, the potential for solar flare activity, still sits at 99% for a C flare, almost a certainty. M flare at 60% chance, and still a uh, another possibility of an X flare. I don't know if we're going to beat that X 1.0 that we had earlier. There it was on the on the. Um, solar image right here pretty well defined bright flare struck up there on the x category x1 and that was earlier at 15:35 utc time today so once again 25 percent chance of an x flare kicking off from this uh, massive uh, sunspot that's still kind of facing us you can see the uh, geomagnetic uh, or the cme that was produced it's a massive um, one Impressive partial halo CME is predicted to sweep past Earth on Saturday and may be responsible for impressive aurora displays throughout the weekend. A spooky Halloween treat, perhaps. We'll see how that goes, right? Middle to high latitude sky watchers should be alert. And of course, more updates will be provided 
as they come in. That's kind of cool. Can't wait to see if uh, see how low that will go in the um, uh, when the uh, CME arrives here. Look at that earthquake activity far as the um, South America region. I kind of like to look at areas where the uh, radio blackout and the most intense concentration of of the uh, charged particles hit. And it was kind of just right over this area here. I don't have that on the map right now or on the uh, space weather map, but it was directly over this region. This earthquake was there already, the 4.4. And... Um, that's a deep one into the Puerto Rico or the uh, Peru Chile trench, 200 kilometer, 4.4. But since then, I tell you what, we just haven't seen too much earthquake activity in the region, uh, far as um, you know, kind of putting space weather and plate tectonics here on Earth in a uh, in the same category. But we'll see. We'll kind of see what happens when that CME hits us. I believe the CME plays a little bit more of a part on uh, the dynamics of of movement and weather. And volcanoes, uh, when it arrives, compared to the uh, you know the um, the X flare, the the instant almost the instant re, uh, instant effect that it has here on Earth. The CME is much more uh, much more powerful and and uh, can create some issues here. So we'll see when it comes in on Saturday. Looking at earthquake activity throughout the Indonesia area and to Fiji, uh, Samoa, Tonga region, nothing significant, just some deep movement in the area. Once again, only one earthquake in the South America region. Kind of, kind of uptick in earthquake activity around the Puerto Rico Trench, and the um, just to the east here. So seeing some uh, threes and whatnot in that region. Texas, West Coast. Aside from the missile earthquake off the coast of Oregon, things have been relatively quiet. Looking at the all magnitudes map here, see some scattered earthquake activity, scattered out and about throughout the West Coast. Even a little movement on the Garlock Fault structure with a 1.1 near Mojave, California at 6.1 kilometers. Some activity down through Southern California as well. But uh, just kind of kind of a, a dull, low day in the earthquake department. Kind of kind of uh, maybe potentially the calm before the storm. A little bit of movement throughout Utah as well. But uh, I tell you what, things are not... Uh, not that active at the moment. I think the largest interesting earthquake was a 5.1 up here near Perryville along the Aleutian Trench, 32 kilometers into the subduction zone there. Other than that, things kind of kind of quiet, folks. We'll see if that changes on the in the weekend here with the CME arriving. Can't wait. I will provide a little bit more detail on exact timing in an update video tomorrow. But for now, uh, let's see what we got here in Yellowstone National Park. I always like to check this, uh, this super volcano. Looks like a little bit of movement over here on the northeast corner. It's kind of odd here. We just don't see too much earthquake activity well to the east around Parker Peak. You can see some well-defined earthquakes striking the area of Parker Peak. This activity also showing up on some seismographs within the vicinity of Pelican Cove down here at Lake Butte. Even Yellowstone Lake picking up on some of the activity, but... Uh, uh, just a couple small quakes. Those were registered on the USGS map here in the all magnitudes region. You can see this activity into Wyoming over here on the northeast corner. Just a uh, looks like the 2.3 was the largest around Little Saddle Mountain. 14 kilometers for the majority of these quakes. That's some deep earthquake activity uh, for the Yellowstone area. Uh, but other than that, folks, the uh, rest of Yellowstone looks pretty quiet. We'll see how it plays out once the CME arrives. Like I say, I'm pretty, uh, pretty strong believer in the effects that it provides here on Earth. So movement around the Seattle area along the Cascadia subduction zone. Also a little increase in uptick and trimmer at the southern end into Northern California. The southern end of the Cascadia showing some trimmer activity as well. We'll see if that kicks back up uh, pretty significantly here in the coming days. All right, guys, hope everyone has a good night. Stay safe out there. Halloween is coming up this weekend. I can't wait. It should be a fun time. Um, peace out, guys. Have a good night.